Oh, it's Mr. McFeely. I have seen the future, and he was wearing number five, and I ain't talking about Robbie Grimsley, folks. Took out the muffins, took out the trail mix, took out the cookies. They stole the monster cookies. Wow, that's awesome. <laughs> that is so awesome. Let's do some broadcasting. Yeah. Always good to do some broadcasting with our guy, Mike McFeely, and there's always better when news is breaking, as it is as you are coming into the studio. We've got... Uh, some stuff hot off the presses here. So give me your immediate thoughts on UTEP and the Mountain I, West it, Conference. Is anybody surprised by that? Is it, do we, did, did we not, not see not this, this guy, coming? Yeah. I'm not surprised. Yeah. So it, it's, um, it just, it's just not going to happen for North Dakota state. And it, it's sad in my view. And it's, as I said last week, I wrote in a column uh, from normal, actually in the press box, as I was <laughs> at the stadium seven hours before the game, um, it's going to be interesting whenever the story is told, if there is a story to tell about, were there discussions between NDSU and other conferences? You know, were there offers? North Dakota State absolutely denies it. You know, the athletic director, Matt Larson, absolutely denies that there's ever been a, an yeah. offer, that there's ever been any serious discussions. And that's probably true. But We'll find out someday uh, whether it I'd is. I'd like or, to know that too. I'd like to know yep. that. And so, yep. it you know, if it's clear, and and we overvalue North Dakota State because we cover the team all the time, and it's in our hometown, and we've seen what they've done in the field and all the national TV games they've played, yep. and they've beaten all the FBS schools, yada 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 yada, all of that. But being an FBS clearly would be an advantage if you wanted to move to where you want to go. And so if there was ever an offer yeah. in the last 10 years or the last three years or whatever, and it, yeah. again, I don't know. I have no evidence that there is, that there's been. But if there was, it's like, oh, boy. It'd be nice to know. Nice to know that story, you know. So we know the uh, other story that came out as well when you came in, that the Pac-12 is going to add Gonzaga for basketball, obviously because they don't play football. But the Pac-12 now yeah. strengthening its basketball side with Gonzaga coming in, uh, pair them with San Diego State. That's two really good basketball programs. Yeah, in one no, league no, that Pac-12 yep. in terms of basketball will be wonderful. It's fine. And that's yep. good. And in terms of football, yep. it'll be fine. Yep. The, the, the Pac-12 of what it's going to be, that would be a great league for NDSU to yeah. be in. It was never going to happen. No. And I maybe it's never going to happen that yeah. maybe they were never on the board for, <laughs> for the Mountain West either. It sure seems like they would have been. But either of those leagues would have been great for North Dakota State. It just, it's not going to happen. And, and the, the problem is, here, here's the problem as I see it, is I know that there's still a small fraction of NDSU fans who are like, well, why would we want to go there? Why would we want to just stay here? Because what's going to happen is it's just going to turn into 1995 again. And you can already see it happening this week. It's, when this game becomes the biggest thing of the year, then you're going backwards mm, in time. Mm. Instead of looking at a national picture and saying, we belong here or there, let's take on this team, let's take on that team, all it's going to become is this incestual yeah. I-29, yeah. just yeah. A NCC circa 1995. That's a good point, good stepping off point, because I got an email on this uh, earlier it, it blows my mind how most of the teams of the top 10 are in the same geographical area. Idaho, Montana State. Yes, it Montana. sucks. Yeah. It sucks. How much of that is a coincidence? How much of it is because they're all looking over each other's shoulders? I don't think well, it's a how coincidence. Much, it, how much is it because the, the, the best teams have left, left FCS? Right, correct. I mean, I'm not, yeah. again, good for UND. They're better than they were. Good for South good Dakota. Good for South Dakota. They're, yep. they're better than they were. You know, I mean, that's fine. But if James Madison and App State and Georgia, Georgia Southern. Southern and all those schools were Delaware. still in, Huck Delaware the was FCS, ranked a bit. Yeah. would things look... I, I did this because I knew this was going to come up today, Dom, and I'm smart. Yes, you are. In 2012. Ah, 12 years ago. Okay. The f no, 10 years ago. 2012. Yeah. It's, it's, 20, it's 2024 now. Yeah, it's 12. Well, you said 2012, right? Yeah. That's, that's 12 you, years ago. Oh, I thought you said 20 years ago. No. I'm sorry. I thought you said 20 said, no, years ago. I'm sorry. Yeah. Are we on live TV? <laughs> Can we go back and edit go this? Go for it. Number one. This is the rankings? This is the final rankings. Okay, of the 2012 Number one, season. North Dakota State, of okay. course. Number two, Sam Houston. 
Gone. A, a, a Southland team in Texas. Number three, Georgia Southern. A SoCon team in the Southeast. Number four, Eastern Washington. A, f- what, Pac, Inland Pac-12 or, whatever, or Inland Pacific Northwest team in Washington. So, so far you've got the Midwest. Yep. You've got Texas. You've got the Southeast. You've got the Far West covered in the top four teams. Good. They're all over the country. It's good. Right? Yep. Number five, Montana State. Okay. Uh, number six, Old Dominion. So you have a team in Virginia, sort of on the East Coast. I mean, yep. the Mid-South, I guess. I don't know how Virginia's categorized geographically. Uh, number eight, Wofford. Okay. South, South I'm Carolina. sorry, number seven, Wofford. Yep. Number eight, Illinois State. Number nine, App State. <laughs> and number 10, Central Arkansas. 11, Stony Brook. 12, Cal Poly. 13, New Hampshire. So, Stony Brook got to 11. Yep, so, wow. I mean, yeah. once you get past, you know, eight, seven or eight, Wow, but but think of the geographic. Um, You're all spread. Over. You're yep. all over the map, correct? And, and that was the fun part, I think, for the fans, for the school, heck, for the media, in those early days correct. of Division One, and then going into the to the 2012s or 2011s, whatever, until the mass exodus started in about I think 2013 or so, with App State, yeah, App State left coastal, after that year, yeah. coastal Georgia, so they all left. Yep. It was that it was a national thing that, wow, you know, you get in the playoffs and and the second best team in the country is Georgia Southern. And we never see them because they're in Georgia and, oh, unbelievable and, yep. and new fans, new media. And then you look at this year <laughs> and it's it's SDSU, NDSU, Montana State, South Dakota are the top four. I would argue that UND might be a top five team. Yep. So if you do that and you... And you I mean, does anybody believe Villanova is the sixth best team in the country? Maybe they are. I I don't know. I think Central Arkansas is decent. Right. They've got Shandarek yep. Powell. They've got David Walker. They're okay. They're both really good. Yep. But you can make a case that the top five teams in the country, four of them are from the same conference. <laughs> and that sucks. Yeah. It sucks. Yep. And what if you're if you're North Dakota State, the the issue now is that you're it's gonna become UND is going to be the big game. We've got to win that game. And the South Dakota State is the big game. We got to, It's all going to be focused on that oh, yeah. instead of national championships and taking on a national field to win a championship. Yeah. And so you're going, in my view, and it's, and it's North Dakota State. It's not their fault. It, it FB, FCS changed. Teams left. Other teams got better. I get that. But just, just they can't let themselves fall into the trap of – the UND game is the biggest, biggest game, game of, of the year. year. Yeah. Because then it becomes 1995 again. Yep. yep. It's funny you mentioned that specific year because that was the last year App State left. The following year, Georgia Southern 2012, left. 2012. Yeah. About. Old Dominion left that years year. Ago. Yes. All those teams all left in that two year period. And it was all, it was different after yeah, that. Coastal left after Coastal that. Coastal went. I just, you remember because you got. I remember when Wofford came up here for the first time. Those were that was cool stories to do. It's a team from South Carolina yeah, never yep. come up here. And and I mean, part of it's gonna you're gonna see the same teams. Yeah. Because, and and yes, you did for a lot of times because for years Eastern Washington was really good. Yep. You know, Montana's been really good. Montana we, State's been really well, good. We saw Sam Houston what three? We saw him back to back in the championship, right. and we saw it twice other in the semifinals. Right. They were up and here. so I mean, so you, you're gonna see some of the same teams yep. when it paired down to Correct. the final, you yes. know, four. Yep. But it's just, it's like everything now is within like the 250 <laughs> miles of one another. It's like, okay. Yep. That's the part that just stinks. It just, yeah. Yep. There's no doubt about it. And that's, you know, like you said, it's nobody's fault up there. It's just that this is what I, we, we've been saying for years as well. We need somebody else to get better. I don't know if that's going to happen. And that's not going to, look, I mean, Illinois State, with all due respect to our guy Brock's back, they stunk on Saturday. Yep. That was, I mean, yep. the Missouri Valley Conference isn't as good as it was 10 years ago. We said it yesterday, Mike, and you've hammered this for and you and I both, like the addition of Murray State. What was that? Yep. What was that? But, but even beyond that, like Youngstown State is yep. Youngstown's not good. They're terrible. Yep. You know, I mean, Illinois it, State. I, Indiana it, State's losing to Houston it, Christian the other NDSU day. NDSU played its best game of the year on Saturday. Okay. I'm not taking yep. anything away from the Bison, but Illinois State stunk. Yep. I mean, just those Youngstown State, Illinois State, they used to be hard-nosed 
battles. I mean, think of the games at Youngstown when Pelini was there. That yep. were just like, wow. Great games. Just great physical yep. games, and they weren't that far behind NDSU. I mean, they had some great defensive players. I mean, wow, they're they, they, they no good this year. Nope. I mean, nope. They're just not. Southern has In, lost Indiana it. State yep. used to be. They, they beat NDSU at the dome. They they were a that play, same year. They the, were the a Napoleon. playoff yeah. team. That same year, you just Indiana gave us the State ball. Western yep. Illinois was a yep. playoff team. Correct. Back when all this whole thing first started, when Bob Nielsen was coaching there. Yeah, yeah. I mean, mm-hmm. it, and it's, now it's just Indiana State should, is going to drop football before they ever get back to the playoffs again. There's a there's a better chance yes. they'll drop football yes. than they get back to the playoffs. <laughs> Western Illinois beat McKendry. For to break a twenty-four game or whatever losing streak no. in FCS, Southern Illinois, I mean, they did not look good. Again, kudos to USD; they're fine. They, did, I mean, nope. they did not look good. Nope. Again, and I know there's been injuries and that happens, but Northern Iowa, Northern same, Iowa, is, same thing. Northern Iowa is a shell yes. of what it was ten years ago. Yep. A shell. Yep. God, those teams that came up here in, oh. in 13, 12, 11, 13, 15. 15. <laughs> My God, those were good teams. Yes. I mean, that was a national championship caliber team that came to the Dome yep. that that the Bison beat in a great game. And I, I still think that UNI team would have beat Jacksonville State oh, God, down, yes. down in Frisco. Yes, yes. You know? <sighs> and so that, that, that yep. you know, people, I take a lot of guff. You know, well, why do you want to why, why get out of FCS? Why, why, these games are great. It's like the old NCC days. Yeah, that's why I want to get out. Yeah. Yep. Is because I don't want the old NCC days to to rehash themselves. I don't care. One email before we go to break. The problem FCS is facing is similar to the point Mike is making about 1995. The teams remaining and entering FCS don't have the resources to maintain a high level of competition. It's only a matter of time before scholarships begin to be reduced, like they were at the Division II level. Yeah, that's and that's a fear. I don't know. I mean, but it, but who knows? Because who, right. because in, if we learned anything about the pandemic. Who made the decisions in FCS? The small schools did. The small yep. schools made the decisions yep. in FCS. When Western Illinois and Indiana State. And, Indiana State, and yep. again, I'm going to couch this by saying at the time, we, we I mean, we just didn't know. Yep. There's a lot we didn't know. But there's no doubt that at the time, Western Illinois and Indiana State made the decision for the Valley. They were holding the cards. Yep. There's no doubt. And that we know royally pissed off Correct. somebody who had an important office at the Fargo Dome, <laughs> who's going to be coaching in Minneapolis, by the That's way, right. on Saturday. Let's break. I might just go down there. Are you going? I might. All right. Let's break. We'll come back. We'll get uh, Mike's thoughts on the football game. And also, we've got a couple emails to uh, ask you about the big trade that happened on Friday night in the NBA. We'll get that more as Hot Mike rolls on on a Tuesday morning. We're back after this. I love you. I don't want you to leave, but I have a, another tweet coming in here that's going to maybe just send you over the over the deep end. Here. Texas State. No, it's in Texas though. Sam Houston. No. Who? <laughs> you know, Ross Dellinger. The Mountain West has had deep and serious discussions with FCS Tarleton oh, State. Okay. Yeah. Sources tell Yahoo Sports the Mountain West Conference needs one more full member. I don't know if Sam Herter is going with them. That's, Sam, that's Sam's team. Our, our, that's our, Sam. guy, our guy Sam, Sam loves, Tarleton. loves Tarleton. Negotiations between the Texas-based FCS school and the conference have progressed. There you go. Yep. But that's again not a not surprise. surprise. No, I mean because it's in it. Texas yep. and it's I think it's about yep. what thirty miles west of Dallas. Yeah, something like and that. And they got as you reported, they got yes. blah. Yes. They got that. Uh, I got an email in because we have not discussed this, and uh, I tweeted, I texted you this Friday night. Mike, your thoughts on the cat trade? The Wolves making a oh, rather yeah. large move well, I, Friday yeah, night. I, um, yeah, that that was surprising. I guess I yeah. I'm not like There's, an NBA insider by any stretch of the imagination. But you love you love your hoops. I do love basketball in the NBA, especially. Um, but yeah, I mean, it was to me it was surprising. I mean, it sort of seemed because we're so close to training camp starting that like today that <laughs> yeah like today that, that the Wolves are going to kind of stand pat and ride it out with what they had. Um, but once it happened and then I've been reading a bunch on it, it, it makes sense from a, just a fu- strictly financial standpoint right. that, that cat's big contract kicks in and there's a luxury tax and then you're, it's all the business reasons. Yep. Um, the interesting part to me is, and this will be remain to be seen is 
I mean, the, you know, we talk about the windows, right? Yep. And last year, clearly the Wolves opened the window to possibly at least getting to the finals or winning a championship. But does their window then, it, is it, I'm not going to say closed, is but it closing? Does it, is it getting tighter because mm. can you replace Cat? Julius Randle, I didn't realize this, but he's he averaged like 24 points a game yeah. last year for the Where Knicks. he got hurt. Yep. Um, the, the Wolves apparently love this DiVincenzo. He can shoot the ball. He can shoot yep. Which the and Wolves play some defense have. on the yep. wing. Yep. And so I, does it make them a better team now? Or does it, I mean, it's, it makes them a different team. Certainly does that. Um, but you, you kind of looked at Cat and Ant and oh. said, and and uh, Nas Reed, and, and you said, okay, that's that's yep. three, and you got Gobert. I would argue Cat was great against the Joker. Yes, and that's, that's the obvious there. comeback yeah. is he was he defended Jokic like nobody else, nobody else has. Nobody else did, no. And so, but we'll see. I mean, it's... Yeah. You know, it, and my wife, who's also a, a bigger NBA fan than I am, um, she said, I'm kind of sad about it because for so many years, Anthony Towns was Carl, yeah. j- just a yes. whiner yes. and just griping about every call and spent more time being at the referees than getting back and playing defense. He didn't do that last year. Nope. He got over that. And he's, Sort of deferred to Ant and said, "You're the man. He's the, it's his team. It's his yep. team." And and Carl Anthony Towns struggled in the in the semifinals. That hap- whatever it happens. Yep. But but he didn't get into those those black holes where he just got all out of sorts with the referees and the calls. Yep. And he was better because of it. Correct. And so you went yep. all right. And my wife said, I, "My she said I finally started to like the guy and thought he was great <laughs> because he stopped whining so much yeah. at the refs." <laughs> and then he they trade him away to yep. the Knicks. By the way, the Knicks may give your Celtics a little run for their money now in the Eastern Conference. I'd look, I'd watch that. I don't think uh, so. No, uh, that's I, not going to happen. Uh, <laughs> I uh, have to ask about the football game this weekend. I know, sure, <laughs> it's a rather large one for this season. Um, UND has surpassed my expectations of what they've done. Former Morant Spud Seth they, Anderson they've, was they've, the they've, they've, they've at least to me. In, 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 fair, in fairness to you, they've. Outpaced people's in Grand Forks' expectations. Yeah, that's probably accurate too. Your, yeah. your your next guest, I think, picked Iowa State to beat UND like forty two to nothing yeah. or something. Um, and I got word from Grand Forks from a number of people up there that they were nervous about the offensive line and nervous about the quarterback. And both of those areas have turned out to yeah. be okay. Yep. And UND has been fine. Uh, the big question is whatever the same one everybody's talking about is. They've had four straight home games right. against inferior opponents. And Outside been, of Montana. Montana, uh, right, yes, yeah. Yes. Montana and that was, was, was a great win. That was a great yep. win. Great yep. win for UND. But the last three. So they're, I mean, UND is is one game ahead of where people, I think, would have prognosticated they were going to be. Um, and they've certainly looked good. I mean, putting up 72 on a, I mean, Murray State yep. stinks. Yep. But putting up 72 on them is pretty good. Um, the quarterback has been I think better than people thought, but still some questions, and he has to show it away from the Alaris Center. Um, Bo Belquist, if he continues what he's doing, when does he get in the Har- not the Harlan Hill? See, I'm going back to '95. <laughs> the Walter Payton. The Walter Payton. <laughs> I mean, if, if Bo Belquist has 10 catches for 120 yards against NDSU, then he would. I well, would hope that somebody would put him in the Walter Payton discussion. He would be in mine. Yeah, yeah I mean, so always scored a touchdown in every year he's played the Bison. By the way, yeah. So, so, and, and yeah. but it's it, it'll be a good football game. Uh, NDSU still is not. This is not one of their most powerful teams. UND is better than they have been. Yep. Um, I think there's gonna be a lot of points. I think there's gonna be we'll a see. high scoring. Yeah, game. we'll see. Has I mean, potential. Has potential. Yeah. It's it's all, but you know. Again, UND has just never played well in the dome. Yeah. But I think they've, they've they got to get over that at some point. Much you know? like we saw last year. They got to beat him at one point, right? Right. And they I mean they just crushed right. him and embarrassed they him last year, which doors is off good them. for them. But you know, can they do it in Fargo? I think it's not going to be a, a 40 point game for NDSU like it seems like the last couple in the dome have been. It's a sellout, Michael. Is that what does that tell you about is it goes back to what you were talking about? Are we regressing to the past because people well, it, are it's, excited no, about it? No, what it shows is that the the fans are generally, some of them have jumped off the bandwagon for the other games, and there's a bunch of UND fans in Fargo, They're and it's only a 70-mile yeah. drive from Grand yep. Forks, so if there's yep. tickets, they're going to buy them. Yep. 
I assume there's going to be a very nice contingent of UND fans there. Which normally has been yeah, for the games that have, have played out here. Uh, I don't have any other news for you, so hopefully I don't want you to, you know. <laughs> no, I, it just, I, never, expect, form, I never expected it to happen. It just, I mean, I was hoping it was going to happen, It just, but you just never expected it was going to happen. Eric's got the map for us, the Google Maps, because yeah. he's good on that. That's where their Tarleton's located, yeah. is just south of, south uh, west south, of but, Dallas. But, but, we so. said, but we said that, right. you know, five weeks ago that, that they were going to look at Texas because it's Texas. It's Texas. And Correct. they wanted to get into that Where do you want to be? California right. and Texas. Texas. And if you could, Florida. Florida, and, but yeah, there's just nothing there. So no. it doesn't surprise me. Man. Conference USA come? <laughs> why, why, would, why would we expect that? I mean, if, I mean, nobody's coming. Nobody's knocking on the door. They're you know, on the board. It's just where are they on the board? How, <laughs> how low down on the board are they? Right. If, if, if the first seven schools said no, <laughs> then, then, they're on the, then they're at the top of the board. Oh, man. Great stuff as always, and you're potentially going to go cover Gophers USC this we'll weekend. Uh, we're, it's, it's There's maybe a connection there. <laughs> it's in. It's in um, Minneapolis. Under, it's under consideration, and it's a night game in Minneapolis. It's under consideration. Okay, all right. You'll keep us abreast of that. So good stuff. I'm sure I will. I'm sure. I'm sure the folks out there are really wants in, to know. In, in my schedule yeah, on, what I'm they doing. They want to know. Yeah. Uh, thanks for coming by, bud. Yep. Good to see you as always. Mike McFeely joining us each shit every Tuesday at 930. We'll break. We start our second hour. Tom Miller joins us in the Grand Forks. Harold, give us an update. He's at UND practice on Finding Hawks preps for North Dakota State. Hour two of Hot Mike begins right after this.